Uh, okay, hello everyone. Um, thank you for being here. Um, well, this is my first time presenting at this conference, so I would like to start by uh, saying thanks to the organizers for this opportunity. So, my name is Gustavo Silva, and today we are going to be talking about uh, flexible array transformations and the implications uh, these transformations have on uh, arrays bound checking and in the security of the Linux kernel, the upstream Linux kernel. Okay, but first, a couple of words about uh, who am I? Uh, I have a background in embedded systems. Uh, before working as a kernel engineer, I, uh, I was an embedded software engineer, so I gained experience developing applications uh, with real-time operating systems and embedded Linux. Uh, this is my uh, sixth year working as a kernel engineer. I collaborate with the Kernel Self-Protection Project and also uh, with the Google Open Source Security team uh, in the kernel division. Yeah, well, I'm a volunteer at Kids on Computers. If you want to know more about this organization, you can ask me and we can have a conversation later. Okay, well, this is the agenda. Uh, when I was writing the slides for this presentation, I noticed that the, the word arrays appears twice in the title of my presentation. So, I thought that it was a good idea to start by saying a couple of words on arrays in C. Uh, so we are going to start with that, and then we are going to uh, explain how we sometimes we need to use arrays as train arrays, and then train arrays as flexible arrays, and then using flexible structures. Uh, then we are going to move on to the main part of this presentation, and um, we are going to talk about how we currently have multiple different ways to declare a flexible array and how, uh, well, those are problematic. And if we want to gain uh, proper array bounce checking on, uh, on trailing arrays, we need to uh, remove that ambiguity from, from the kernel. Um, then, of course, we are going to, uh, to tap on the case of UAPI. Whenever uh, we need to uh, land a lot of changes across the whole kernel tree, uh, there's going to be the case where we also need to touch uh, UAPI. So, Let's see how we are doing that. And well, finally, the current status of this work and some conclusions. Okay, well, let me start with this. Uh, here's the most simple declaration of an array in C. So here we have a happy array. And uh, the size of happy array is clearly well-defined uh, declaration, right? So happy array has enough space to hold 10 elements of type integer. Um, one, one definition of an array is that, well, an array is a contiguously allocated sequence of objects of the same type. And another important thing to say about arrays is that they are very useful because uh, we can iterate over an array, right? So as long as we access this array through uh, uh, its uh, valid indexes, uh, everything is going to be fine. So happy array is going to remain happy as long as we continue to access it uh, within its boundaries. The problem with this is that the C language uh, doesn't enforce arrays boundaries. So it is always up to the developers to make sure that every access they, uh, every time they have to access any array, uh, they need to check that, well, it's going to be within the boundaries of the array, right? Otherwise, uh, we are going to arrive into what well, I like to call the land of possibilities, which, well, it's undefined behavior. Yeah, well, here's an example of a miserable array. <laughs> okay. Well, sometimes in the kernel, we need to use uh, trailing arrays, and a trailing array is merely an array that is going to be declared at the end of a structure. So we have a, a, here an example, the struct trailing, to illustrate that uh, it contains a trailing array. Um, and again, Something quite important to mention here is that if you notice, happy, happy, trail, happy array, uh, the size of happy array is clearly well defined at declaration. However, there are going to be uh, a lot of cases in which we actually don't know how, how big our array is going to be at compile time. So we are going to depend on runtime uh, to actually know how many space we need to allocate for, for this array, right? So in this case here, I have an example of an array that depends on, uh, on some variables at runtime in order, to, in order to, to determine the total size uh, or the total uh, number of elements that it is going to contain. 
Uh, I guess this is a good example because, well, usually this type of objects, this type of objects, uh, these variable length objects, uh, they need uh, a header to describe the contents of their data, right? So I think that structure is like a, a quite good uh, example of, uh, uh, of, a, of, a, of a trailing array as an object of variable length. Okay, now let's get into flexible arrays and flexible structures. Well, a flexible array is merely uh, a trailing array uh, which, uh, which size is going to be determined at runtime. And a flexible structure is just a structure that contains a flexible array at the end, right? Okay, uh, we currently have uh, three different ways to declare a flexible array. Uh, and we classify those different ways into two main groups. One that we call fake flexible arrays, and uh, which are, in this case, one element arrays and, and zero length arrays. So the need for, uh, for declaring a training array as a variable length object has been around since forever, right? Since we needed to load firmware and make sense of it. Uh, so in this case, people started to use one element arrays to declare this type of object. And, and well, uh, before uh, I add uh, more uh, to that, I want to mention that, well, uh, the opposite of a, fake of a fake flexible array is, of course, a true flexible array. So what's a true flexible array? A true flexible array is a flexible array member. Uh, this type of object was introduced in C99. So this is part of the language. Unlike the other two uh, ways we have to declare a flexible array, one is a buggy hack. Uh, we are going to uh, get into why it's a buggy hack. And the second one uh, is a GNU extension that, if I remember correctly, was added to uh, in C90. Um, hey, well, let's get a little bit more deeper into uh, what is, uh, why, one element is why, why one element arrays are buggy. Um, here I have an example, uh, but well, the problem with one element arrays is that one element. So that one element is always going to contribute to the total size of the containing structure. Uh, so that can be problematic. Uh, developers need to be aware all the time that uh, every time they use this flexible structure, this containing structure, they need to be aware that they are making use of a one element array. Um, and at the bottom, there are uh, two lines of code uh, as an example of how people usually um, uh, compute the total size that they need to allocate for both the flexible structure and, and the array, right? The, the flexible array. So you can see there that in this case, count uh, is going to, in this example, count uh, is supposed to, uh, to hold the total elements in the array. So to calculate the size for the allocation, well, we need to take into account the size of the container structure uh, plus the size of the element type of the array. And well, we are going to multiply this by the number of elements we are going to, we want uh, our array to, uh, to ultimately have, right? So if you notice, um, we need to subtract one from, from, that, from that number of items in our array. So that's problematic. I mean, uh, every time we use this, this type of arrays, we always need to remember that, okay, uh, this array is already contributing to the size of my container structure. So whenever I need to do something, we need, we need to compute something with the size either of the container structure or with the size of the type of the array. Uh, we need to take into account that extra size, right? And well, the second line at the bottom is um, is how you can uh, how you can write the same pattern, but instead using the stroke size helper, which is uh, at this moment the recommended way to do it. And well, of course, having that one element uh, inside your your flexible structure is a potential a potential source of all by one problems. So again, uh, when we are working on flexible array transformations, uh, we need to uh, audit every place at which we identify that the size of the structure is being used for something. So also we need to verify that the original code 
uh, doesn't already contain any kind of off by one problems. And well, let's get into uh, zero like arrays. Well, zero like arrays uh, is an extension that was added to, uh, well, sort of like a, a, a remediation uh, for the fact that at that moment the, the language uh, didn't have a proper way to declare this type of objects, right? Uh, this type of flexible arrays. So um, the difference is that compared to one element arrays, well, zero length arrays don't, uh, they don't contribute to, uh, to the size of the container structure. However, they are still being a little less, a little buggy, all right? And well, again, at the bottom, there is an example of how you, you can use the open coded version to calculate uh, the total size to allocate for both the container structure and the, and the flexible array at the end, right? The fake flexible array. So well, of course, this, uh, this is not a happy array. This is an unhappy array because, well, its size is zero, right? That's a bad joke, but anyways. <laughs> okay, uh, now, what is a true flexible array? Well, uh, in C99, uh, a flexible array member was added to the language. So, so now we have a proper way to declare this type of objects without having to, uh, to, uh, to be concerned about uh, that extra size that we could uh, be carrying around if we instead use a one element array, right? So now every time we need to use this type of objects, well, the best way to do it is just using a flexible array member. And well, one of the characteristics of these arrays is that uh, they have to be at the end of the structure, right? This is enforced by the compiler and the other two ways uh, we have to declare the same thing, uh, we can actually have uh, um, one of those arrays in the middle of a structure and the compiler is going to be totally fine with that. And of course, that's again, uh, that again opens the door for uh, potential problems, right? In particular, undefined behavior. Okay, well, uh, now let's see what happens. Um, well, we've been talking about um, using the size of an array, calculating the size of a container structure uh, to calculate the total size for an allocation. Well, now let's take a look at what size of uh, opinions are about this type of trailing arrays. Okay, first, if we apply size of uh, to a one element array, we of course are going to get the size of uh, the type of that one element, right? If we apply size of uh, to a zero length array instead, well, of course we are going to get zero because we are declaring that this array, its size is zero. And in the case of a flexible array, well, here uh, size of is going to fail because uh, the compiler is going to complain that we are trying to apply size of to, um, to an object of incomplete size, right? So a declaration, a flexible array member lacks of, uh, of, of, of a size, so that's why it is of incomplete size. So, well, this illustrates a little bit how can uh, be, how this uh, type of arrays, having this, all these uh, different ways to declare the same thing uh, can be problematic because again, we need to remember how uh, each one of those uh, are, have to be used, right? Uh, what are the things that we need to take into account all the time when we are making use of each one of those? So the behavior uh, is different. Okay, now again, the land of possibilities. Um, I was doing some stroke size transformations in the kernel. I was working on uh, uh, transforming this open code, uh, open coded pattern to, um, uh, to, uh, to the stroke size, uh, to use the stroke size helper instead. And then I, I ran into this issue and the problem here is, is that we have this zero length array just in the middle of a structure. And that is not a problem. The problem is that this array is actually being used as a flexible array member. So this is uh, a runtime, uh, the size is not going to be zero, right? It's going to be bigger. Uh, and at the moment we try to make use of this array, well, all sorts of things could happen, right? One of them is that we can overwrite RCU head, uh, which is just after it. Um, here the solution is just, uh, 
placing the steel link array just at the end of the structure, and that will be the solution for the problem. However, if we replace this steel link array with a proper flexible array member, now the compiler is going to enforce this behavior. So if other people come and, uh, and yeah, they, they made a mistake and introduced a new member to this structure just after this array, well, the compiler is, is going to complain, so they are not going to be able to introduce undefined behavior uh, as in this case. And well, this might well be, this actually is the, the first time uh, we did a flexible array transformation uh, in the kernel self-protection project. Uh, I was doing other things, but I ran into this issue, so I, at the time, I fixed this as undefined behavior. And the funny thing here is that this issue was introduced in 2011 and was fixed uh, until 2019. So again, this might well be considered ground zero uh, when it comes to uh, this work of making, uh, working on flexible array transformations in the kernel. Okay, so so far we have seen how uh, it is ambiguous. We, it, is, it can be problematic to have uh, ambiguous, gay, uh, ambiguous uh, ways to declare the same thing. Now we talk a little bit about um, how these flexible array transformations uh, have contributed to, uh, to enabling array bounds. Currently, we have, uh, we have uh, array bounds enabled. Uh, it is disabled for GCC 12 only because, uh, well, we realized GCC had a lot of problems, so we disable uh, as, of, as of now, as of by now, uh, it is disabled only for GCC 12 but for the, for the rest of the, of the version is, um, is enabled, and for Clang, of course. Okay, here, we, when we were uh, trying to enable array bounds, uh, we ran into a lot of false positives. Um, the problem was that, well, people were using these fake flexible array declarations to, uh, to, um, to declare having a dynamically sized uh, uh, object, right? And well, uh, some, of those, some of those arrays were being indexed uh, directly, right? Through, directly through their index. So those are false positives and the solution there, uh, well, was only transform those, all those instances that we found into uh, proper flexible array members. So with that, the false positives and the warnings, uh, all they uh, went away and we could uh, continue making progress towards enabling array bounds, right? So array, uh, flexible array transformations also has to ha have contributed to, uh, to enabling uh, array bounds in the kernel. And well, here is a, a very simple example. Um, this, here we have uh, the array name that was originally used, was originally uh, declared as uh, one element array and the warning is that, well, uh, some code was trying to access uh, index one of name, right? But uh, a declaration, well, name has only be, can only be accessed uh, through index zero. So yeah, of course, name was being used as a flexible array member. And here, the fix was just transforming it into a flexible array uh, member. And that was a simple fix. And there are other more, a little, a little bit more elaborate where we have to, uh, well, we could use uh, a stroke size instead of the open coded version. You can see at the, at the top, um, originally the people were using this pattern that we just saw, uh, and they had to subtract one from the, from, from the variable that was going to contain the total elements for the array, right? So, so that's the, that's, that's a main issue with this type of, uh, of flexible arrays. And of course, at the bottom, we have uh, the one element array that was transformed into a proper flexible array member. And with that, all those warnings went away. Okay, well, now let's talk a little bit about how uh, this work also contributes to, uh, to the recent hardening of main copy. So this is an example of uh, how uh, a flexible array can be used uh, with memcopy. Here we have flexible structure, and of course we have our flexible array, 
and we want to copy some data into our flexible array, right? So this, the, the size of the data is going to be some size. So this is a fairly simple example of how we can use um, main copy and flexible arrays. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, how main copy works internally. With the recent updates to uh, Fortify source, main copy internally used, well, by the way, this is a simplification of the main copy function, of, of the fortified main copy function. Internally, main copy on the fortified source uh, uses uh, building object size. So what this function does is that it's going to give us uh, the size of, uh, of the object, right? That we, we, we pass a pointer uh, to an object, uh, we pass a pointer to this function, and, um, and the function is going to, to give us back the size of, uh, of, of, the, of the object this pointer is pointing to. So here, well, at the bottom of uh, main copy, we can see how uh, we are trying to get the size of destination and the size of source at compile time. Okay, so far, any questions? Because I don't know if I'm going too quick or I mean, I have a lot of material, so I have 75 slides, so. Um, okay, let's, let's continue. Okay, well, now, uh, um, the thing is that if we apply, well, if we, if we try to, uh, to get the size of a flexible array uh, through uh, the use of building object size, well, the function is going to return uh, minus one, which means that uh, it actually doesn't know how big this object is. And in this case, it's totally fine because uh, let's remember that flexible array mem that uh, our flexible array, our true flexible array member, uh, it doesn't have a size of declaration, so it's fine. It's fine that a building object size uh, doesn't know how, how big it is. And yet again, so it is an object of, of incomplete size, so, so yeah, it, it cannot determine its size. Okay, but what about fake uh, flexible arrays? What happened with them? They do have a size. One of them, the one element array, well, we are saying that, well, it's, uh, the number of elements is going to be one. Therefore, we are able to determine the total size uh, of the array. And of course, a zero length array, its size is going to be zero. Okay, it turns out that building object size returns uh, minus one for all those cases. It doesn't know how big they are, even though those arrays clearly have a size of declaration. So that's another problem with this type of, of uh, with these different variants uh, to declare a flexible array. And again, let's remember what uh, size of uh, think about these arrays. Uh, yeah. It can be a bit confusing, right? Okay, but now let's see what happens if we try to use building object size to get the size of any trailing array. What we found out uh, is that building object size is going to return minus one all the time. So it actually doesn't matter uh, how big your trailing array is, building object size is still is not able to reason about the total size for that array. So that's really, really problematic. So yeah, what's going on? I mean, we are trusting on building size to fortify main copy, and it happens that it is not able to reason about the size of any trailing array. So yeah, the thing is that at this moment, main copy is not able to sanity check uh, any trailing array. And of course, this is a case for go fix the compiler. I mean. And yeah, we definitely need to fix the compiler. We need to find a way to fix this because uh, otherwise we are not going to be able to, uh, to add proper bounce checking to, uh, to, to, to arrays, to training arrays that have a, a, a size at declaration, right? And of course, size of is the only one that is able to reason uh, correctly about the situation. He returns the size of the array, the actual size of the, of the array, 
and it says that, well, it, it fails when we try to use, when we try to apply this uh, operator to, uh, to a flexible array member. Okay, but it might be worth it uh, exploring a little bit why it is that building object size cannot reason about any trailing array. So yeah, it happens that we have some legacy code. In this example, we have a, 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 a socket uh, address structure. This is from uh, BSD. This is code from BSD. So in this case, um, we have this trailing array, SA data, socket address data, and a declaration, its size is clearly well-defined. However, at runtime, this array can go all the way up to 255 bytes of size, right? So it is a trailing array with a fixed size of declaration that at runtime is going, to be, uh, is going to behave as a flexible array member. So that's problematic, and that's actually the reason why compilers are currently trading all trailing arrays as if they were flexible array members. And, and well, this is part of the log uh, in that bug. Um, if you are curious about this situation, you can go and take a look uh, at that issue, and well, you're going to find uh, exactly this explanation, right? We have legacy code that we need to uh, keep running, so we are sacrificing some legitimate cases in which building object size, uh, they have enough information, the compiler has enough information to determine the size of, uh, of an array, but it just says that it doesn't know because you might want to use this train array as a flexible array member uh, somehow, right? Okay, so yeah, we have a problem, so what do we do about it? Okay, uh, we need a couple of solutions. First, we need to get rid of the ambiguity uh, of having multiple ways uh, to declare a flexible array member, right? So we need to, uh, we need to have code that if we find uh, the declaration of a one element array, uh, we know that the developers, for some reason, they indeed need to use this array uh, they, they, they need this array to contain only one element all the time. And in the case that this is supposed to be a variable length object, well, we need to see that they have declared this as a true flexible array member. We also need to fix the compiler. So again, there's a link to, uh, to the, a bug in Boxilla for GCC uh, where people is working on this problem. So yeah, from the side, from the kernel side, uh, we need to do, we need to get rid of flexible arrays, of course. We need to, we need to get rid of fake flexible arrays, the one element arrays and the zero length arrays. And we should only uh, use, every time we need to write new code that, may, that needs this type of code construct, this type of objects, we need to uh, use flexible array members all the time. So we need to avoid uh, introducing more of these fake flexible arrays into the code base. And of course, we need to fix the compiler. We need to fix uh, how currently uh, building object size is working. And we have uh, another, another, we have another solution. We have, uh, there are other things that we can do. So in this case, we can add a new option that is going to be called a strict flex arrays. So this is already work in progress. People both in Clang and in GCC, they are working on this. And well, a strict flex arrays is going to be supported in GCC 13 and Clan 16. So let's see how this works. Okay, this new option have uh, different level values. Um, in the case that you use this option with level value zero, this is currently the default behavior, which is any trailing array uh, can be considered a flexible array member. So everything is going to remain the same. If we use this option with uh, level value one, well, now only fake flexible arrays and true flexible array members are going to be used uh, as uh, variable length objects, right? So building object size, 
uh, is going to continue returning that it doesn't know the size of the object. We level value two now only zero length, zero length arrays and, uh, and, and flexible array members are going to be considered flexible array members at runtime. So in this case, uh, now we are, uh, we are fixing the, uh, the one element array part, right? And the final option is uh, the final level value is level three. Uh, the sad thing about this is that uh, currently, as of today, uh, this is going to be supported only on GCC. So uh, there is an ongoing discussion uh, from the clan side. So they, they don't want to <laughs> introduce this option yet. So uh, we need to, I don't know, we need to, uh, to persuade it uh, to, to do it. So in this case, Level value three, well, this is what we want, this is what we need. Now, finally, only true flexible array members are going to be treated as, um, as flexible array, uh, as objects of variable length at, at build time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, at runtime. And, um, and yeah, that's what we need. So, so yeah, so this is a lot of work. I mean, this is work in progress, we have been doing flexible array transformations for more than a couple of years now. Um, and yeah, we, we still need to, to do a lot more because the thing is that transforming one element arrays, transforming zero link arrays into flexible array members is fairly simple compared to transforming one element arrays. Because as I have said, we need to audit a lot of code. We need to make sure that the developers originally, they didn't introduce um, and of like one problem. We have found uh, many cases where, we have found cases in which they are, they are allocating one too many items for this array, or they are doing some, uh, they are using this flexible array structure with a one element array into a couple more other structures. So we need to verify that all the, uh, every time they are computing the size of these structures to get any other value to do any other thing, everything is, is, uh, is under control, right? So that's time consuming, that's problematic. And well, yeah, what we need to do is to finish uh, all those transformations. We need to complete that work. And I don't know how, how, how long it's going to take, but uh, well, we also need to enable uh, flexible, strict flex arrays with a level value three. We also need to convince Clang developers to add this option and, uh, and well, until, if we complete that work, if we transform all the fake flexible arrays into actual true flexible array members, and we convince Clank of adding this new option that GCC already has, well, at that point, we can say that main copy, a fortified main copy, is going to be finally able to, uh, to sanity check all trailing arrays, right? Of fixed size, of fixed size. Okay, so yeah, so at this point, we know how to gain a bounce checking on, uh, on trailing flexible, on trailing arrays of fixed size. Okay, so now what about flexible array members? We would like to uh, add bounce checkings to, to those objects, however, they are more challenging. So this is, uh, this is a solution that has been proposed from, uh, from I don't know how, how much this has been along. I mean, uh, there have been people that has proposed this solution to this kind of problem. So in this case, the solution would be to add a new attribute, uh, a, new, a new attribute to relate somehow a variable at runtime that we know it is going to contain the total number of elements for our array and relate this variable to our flexible array member. So with that, compilers can reason about, well, now I know at least where I can go and look for the size of this flexible array, right? And well, uh, let's uh, tap on uh, the case of UAPI a little bit. Of course, UAPI is always challenging. We need, to, uh, we need to avoid breaking user space, of course. So 
the challenging thing in particular with uh, one element arrays, with transforming one element arrays into flexible array members is, uh, here's an example of that. Originally, what we were doing, we were duplicating all the members in the structure, uh, putting them into a couple of structures within a union, right? So that's a lot of uh, code churn. Uh, and well, now we have a better solution. Now we can use this new helper, declare flex array. So if you are a maintainer and you happen to, you know that you have one of these uh, one elements in your code and you want to help us transform it, well, you can use now this helper. So instead of duplicating all the members in the structure, you can just add a new a union and inside you can just you add the one element that is going to be continue that, that will be continue to be used into uh, by uh, user space and you can add now uh, a flexible array member through the use of declare flex array so the flexible array member is the is the array that is going to be used uh, on the side of the kernel right And yeah, the bad news is that, uh, again, uh, the size of this structure, well, is not going to be affected. I mean, uh, that one element array is going to, uh, uh, to contribute to the size of this structure, right? Okay, what's the current status of uh, this work? Well, uh, in one of the strategies uh, that we have been following is first uh, to address the issue of zero length arrays. So as I said, those are fairly simple to address. So we have mostly finished that part of the work. However, we don't have a way to, uh, to prevent more of those issues to enter uh, uh, the code base. So, uh, so yeah, if, if you are writing new code, uh, please use flexible array members. And, and yeah, well, the one element arrays is still a work in progress. That's the more challenging uh, part of the work. And uh, yeah, it's time consuming. It's, uh, we need to take a look at every place. We need to double check stuff. And after we transform the whole thing, we need to verify that we, we are not introducing off by one problems, right? And well, yeah, we've been using some uh, different tools um, as they are problematic to, to transform and sometimes the code and uh, having a, a, a lot of changes. Uh, we need to somehow prove the maintainers that this update to their code is not, um, is maintaining the executable part, right? Uh, as before and after the changes, right? That we are not actually modifying the, the logic that, and that everything is, is, is working right, is still working right. So with, for that, we've been using uh, object dump. Uh, recently, we'd, uh, we've been trying to use uh, Yaidra. I don't know quite right how to pronounce that, but uh, Bindiv also, and some custom um, different tools. And well, conclusions. Well, we definitely need to remove uh, that ambiguity from the kernel. We need to adopt the use of flexible array members every time we need uh, an object of variable length. Right, so we need to stop introducing more one element arrays uh, to the code base. We need to stop introducing more zero length uh, arrays to the code base. And of course, we need to update, uh, we, well, we need to convince client people to add uh, this level value for a strict flex arrays. And we first need to transform all the fake flexible arrays into flexible array members in order to be able to finally enable this compiler option, right? Which is pretty new. And of course, well, with this work completed, uh, the recent vulnerabilities that have been discovered over, I don't know, at least uh, three years, uh, all could have been addressed by, uh, by, this for, by, by this hardening to main copy and this flexible array transformations. So this work is, uh, is absolutely important it really uh, improves the security of the kernel because if we can complete this work, we can say that we are going to add sanity checking to all trailing arrays, both of fixed size or of variable uh, length uh, through the use of a fortified main copy. And that would be really, really great. 
Um, and yeah, well, the last point is that we know exactly how to do this. Uh, well, it is just that it's going to take time, but at least we have a clear vision of how to address this problem. So I guess that's, that's good progress. And with that, thank you. I don't know if you have any questions about anything. Yeah, so you mentioned that you can't prevent the, you know, the zero lung phase, and, and I guess in the future with one lung phase entering kernel. But what has been efficient for us in the past when we did similar like huge undertaking of converting the atomic T to ref count T to convert like a kernel reference counting to its proper type. Like I, I, I wrote the cocosinel pattern which we detected mm -hmm. and when we integrated it to zero day. So every time anyone tries to check in code, the new code with this, you know, the offending thing, there would be email sent to the whoever is trying to check in the code, me, I don't know if anyone else, and then even if they don't react, I would look at the code and if it indeed looks like, you know, they're, they're doing what they shouldn't be doing, I'll start following up with an e email with mm -hmm. the developer. And I was first afraid that it's going to be very noisy, like I'm going to get a lot of these emails, but no. It's actually like, especially over time, now I might get an email once in a couple of months. That, okay, oh, somebody's again trying to do this. So, <laughs> so I, I highly recommend for, for kind of monitoring this while people kind of really forget this practice to this, this cocosinel pattern automatically integrated in the zero day has been very sufficient. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that definitely is a, is a great idea. I mean, we ran into the same issue when we were removing uh, variable length uh, arrays um, from the kernel. Uh, and those, uh, by the way, those, those were raised uh, in the stack. Um, we needed the help of, uh, of the maintainer of Linux Next, so we were asking him to please uh, enable this option so anytime people introduce new instances of this issue, it can be reported, and uh, yeah, that was some great help. So yeah, definitely we can do something similar now with Coxinal, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the suggestion. So, so um, you mentioned one of the commits uh, that you found at ground zero and was market of the fixes, so it could be backported. So have you found many other real bugs and what's the plan here to make sure they're backported because backporting all the changes that introduce it here are not feasible in my opinion. Oh no, yeah, and, and actually we are not even thinking about it. I mean, uh, we are not thinking about porting all the flexible array transformations. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, <laughs> that would be difficult, yeah. But what about the real bugs? Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, the real bugs, uh, what we try to do is, well, to include the fixed stack, and so with the hope that they are going to be taken by the stable people, and they are going to be backported, yeah, of course. Thank you. Do you know what the uh, opposition to the the decline folks have with adding the the equal three option? Yeah, the, I, I, if I remember correctly, the argument is that uh, well. Just don't use uh, zero length arrays. Right, something, something like that. Right? If I, I remember can, correctly. Yeah, I can answer the the minutia of that, which is um, the the Clang folks take the position that if you're going to eliminate the GNU extension, then you can't have a zero length array because that's not legal in the C standard. You cannot declare arrays with zero length in the C standard. The GNU extension was allowing a zero-sized array. Um, and then it is also a flexible array. So they didn't want uh, this, like, a splitting of, of the use. Like, oh yeah, we'll still have a GNU extension, but it will only provide us with arrays that have no size, which to them seems like a ridiculous position to take. Um, Unfortunately, that's not the reality of our world, which is when the GNU extension was added, 
some code made flexible array use out of it, and some code literally used them as empty arrays, as markers in structures and, and scattered over the kernel. And sometimes there's an array that normally has a some larger size, and due to config options or something, it, the macro that defines its size drops to zero, and there, you know, the code to work on it ceases to exist because it just gets dead code eliminated, whatever. But the definition of that array still exists in the structure. And like you, you can't, the, the option, the Clang is asking to use, oh, the dash W. Zero um, length array. Yeah, zero length array, yeah. which is, which will warn on finding the definition in a structure. It's like, well, like we can't, we don't live in that world where we have this perfection and like, I guess we can come up with some horrendous way to deal with that, but it's much cleaner to just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. We accept having zero length arrays, They're, they exist. Like we have them, we just want them to never be flexible arrays. Yeah, so yeah, because we, we currently, actually we have built uh, the kernel with Clang and this uh, W zero length arrays uh, option enabled and we have, uh, there are some configuration that, uh, in which we have more than 60,000 of those issues, right? And of course, it is obvious not all of them are being used as, as flexible array members, right? So. Okay, well, I guess that's it. So, well, thank you, thank you.